Well, beloved in Christ, grace to you and peace from God the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. And also with you. You know, great day in the Christian calendar will probably go by this week unnoticed by most people, even by Christians. There might even be some pastors who will forget all about this day. It so happens that on Thursday, we honor our ascended Lord Jesus Christ, who we know from Scripture was lifted high up into heaven until a cloud carried him out of sight. Yet this great and marvelous miracle has been forgotten. Now, of course, we don't know that Jesus ascended to heaven on Thursday of this week, but it is in the Christian calendar because it happened. So whether we would take this day or another day doesn't matter very much. What matters is that Jesus ascended into heaven. And that it's a historical, factual account that's been recorded in the Bible. However, for some unexplainable reason, this event has been minimized. Look at Easter. This day is remembered by everyone and we have a well-attended church. Take Pentecost. It too is remembered by many and we have a fairly well-attended church. But when we think about the Ascension Day, sadly, many empty pews. Yet it seems to me that if we truly and honestly believed that the Lord Jesus Christ ascended and floated up into heaven, all Christians would be so overwhelmed that they, they would never stop praising and worshiping God. Could it be that perhaps we don't believe that it happened? I would like to ask that question of everyone who is listening to my voice right now here and online. Do you believe that Jesus ascended, was visibly lifted into the actual presence and home of God? Yes. Amen. Well, here at Central, we confess Jesus ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty from whence he will come to judge the living and the dead. We just said that this morning. Maybe some really don't believe what we confess. Could it be that that's the reason for the lack of interest of this day? Is honesty being left behind in our worship of God? Are we becoming so apathetic in our religious life that God's word no longer means what it says? Is it possible for the church today to reject the very doctrines and creeds it teaches and confesses? These are good questions. And they need to be asked and answered by every single Christian. You see, my friends, there will always be the danger of minimizing the truth if we stay away from the hearing and the teaching of Christ and we wander away from God's Word. Today's word is from the book of Acts. It was our reading from the book of Acts this morning. I would ask again if you're able to rise out of respect for the glorious truth of God. In the first book, O Theophilus, I have dealt with all that Jesus began to do and teach until the day when he was taken up after he had given commands through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. He presented himself alive to them after his suffering by many proofs, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. And while staying with them, he ordered them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, You heard from me, for John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, it is not for you to know times or seasons that the Father has fixed by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. And when he had said these things, as they were looking on, he was lifted up, 
and a cloud took him out of their sight. And while they were gazing into heaven as he went, behold, two men stood by them in white robes and said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking into heaven? This Jesus, who was taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. These are your holy words, Heavenly Father. Sanctify us in its truth. Your word is the glorious only truth. Thank you. Please be seated. Right here, we see that God's Word teaches us that Jesus ascended bodily into heaven. But do you believe it? I sure hope you do. And knowing each of you who are here today, I assume the answer is yes. But I'm still going to ask you this morning to re-examine your faith in Jesus and the written Word of God. Is Jesus just a man? Is he just a radical revolutionary individual whose main emphasis is on social issues and injustice? Is that the cross of Jesus? Is that the Jesus of the resurrection? Is that the Christ of the ascension? Of course, the truth of Christ is found only in the Word of God. The Word of God teaches us that Jesus is not an invention of man's own philosophies and ideals, but that Jesus is God's Son, God himself in the flesh, resurrected from the dead, ascended into heaven, and the one who is coming back. Do you believe that? In our text today, it is clear that Luke certainly believed that. One can't read this book of Acts without sensing the factual history being so precisely recorded. This is no fairy tale. This is not some fantasized individual man sitting in some desert wondering about life and writing a lot of gibberish. This is fact. Listen again to these words of Dr. Luke. Acts 1, 1 and 2 reads, In the first book, O Theophilus, I have dealt with all that Jesus began to do and teach until the day when he was taken up after he had given commands through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. Now Luke in essence says, I'm setting in order the record. So listen carefully to what I am saying, because what I say is true and correct. I want to tell you of all of the infallible truths of Christ's divine resurrection. Then he goes on and tells about Jesus commanding his apostles to go out and make disciples of all the world. Acts 1.8 reads, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. And then he informs that the Holy Spirit is going to come upon these apostles so that they should wait in Jerusalem for that great day of Pentecost where they will go and begin to evangelize the entire world. Acts 1, 4, and 5 reads, and while staying with them, he ordered them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, You heard from me, for John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Then Luke declares that a cloud took the Christ out of their sight, and two angels said to the disciples, Men, why do you stand here gazing? Jesus is going to come back the same way you saw him going up. Now let's stop here for just a minute. Let's stop and think about this magnificent moment that Dr. Luke has so vividly and meticulously recorded. 
the disciples gathered together with Christ at the Mount of Olives, and Jesus, after giving his empowering message to his apostles, telling them that they would receive power through the Holy Spirit to be his witnesses to the entire world, as Christ has given these men his final blessing, he is received, lifted up, and taken slowly out of their sight. These disciples see it all with their very eyes as the witnesses they were to be. An odd silence comes over them. Then slowly and majestically and mightily, Jesus rises heavenward, up from the earth, higher and higher. Their eyes are wide with astonishment. They follow him and strain and looking upward. Far into the air they see the holy body of Jesus until a cloud takes him completely out of their sight. And they still gaze after him. But he is gone. Christ has ascended into heaven. He was transferred timelessly into the heavenly glory and dwelling of God and his angels, ascended bodily to be at home and reign powerfully forever with the Father. Now it's important to understand that the ascension, like the resurrection, pertains only to the body of Jesus and thus pertains to his human nature in union with his divine nature. But the greatest part of this forgotten miracle was what occurred after the cloud took Christ out of sight when Jesus was instantly in the glory of heaven, seated at the right hand of God the Father in order to exercise his full majesty and power forever, also according to his human nature. And while this is almost incomprehensible for our human understanding to grasp, Christ resides in heaven with the same body that died on the cross and rose from the grave. And he, in his omnipotent omnipresence, is at the same time wherever he has promised to be, and that too according to both his human and divine nature. This cloud that carried Christ to heaven was the divinely chosen earthly means in a final and appropriate way to remove the visible body of Jesus from the eyes of the apostles. They were to cease looking because Jesus was gone where there is no space, no time, or any other mundane restriction. Christ had gone away but destined to return again in the same way that he left. Oh, my friends, don't we all see and capture the awesome power of this? Why are so many Christians so unresponsive and so uncaring to this miraculous event? Why do we not all have more faith and more dynamic willingness to be used of God every single day? Why are, we, why are we not more willing to be attracted to the cross? Why are we so anemic as Christians? Why do we neglect talking to people about Jesus and to emphasize that we truly believe the words we confess? Loved ones, we should be awestruck every Sunday coming into the church to hear the words we so boldly acknowledge. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty from whence he will come to judge the living and the dead. We should be elated knowing this about Jesus. But I'm afraid to say that Christ's ascension is the forgotten miracle. And I'm also convinced that if I were to ask the many members of this congregation who are not here today 
what is happening on Thursday, too many would say, I don't know, why, what, what's going on? Is something happening? <laughs> yes, something is happening. It's the day we remember Jesus ascending bodily into heaven. You know, these miracles of the Lord, which are so tremendous, such as the divine virgin birth of Jesus who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, the tremendous resurrection of Christ, his glorious ascension into heaven, and the magnificent return to him back to earth. These miracles and these dates we ought never to forget. We ought to write them down on our calendar and inscribe them on our hearts. For instance, there should not be one Christian who doesn't know when Pentecost is this year. It's in two weeks on June 6th. But we as Christians should all know these events as part of our lives. And this is not a question of being under the law. I'm not talking about some legalistic, pietistic reason to remember these things. These should be remembered because the gospel message we have is a message of power, a message of strength, a message of great, overwhelming miracles. And we ought to be proclaiming that. So, so just what does Ascension Day say to us? Why is this such a day of importance? Well, first of all, it tells us that Jesus is Lord. Now, we already know this from the resurrection, but as the resurrection brought Jesus out of the grave, so his ascension brought him to heaven. Jesus never died after the resurrection. Thrilled? I am, and you ought to be as well. What if Christ had merely been resurrected, which of course would have been a very tremendous miracle, but then later had died and was buried and is now waiting for the future resurrection of the body? But we would say, well, the resurrection was a great miracle, but something's missing. He's dead. He was alive after the resurrection, that's true, but again, after 40 days of being here, he grew old and he got sick or he died or something happened to him. What a tragedy. But thanks be to God for his word. Because Dr. Luke, a physician of note, a highly educated man who was very interested in detail, tells us, look, this man ascended into heaven bodily, physically, visibly, and he is coming back in the same way. My friends, we need to recapture this idea in our thinking as a congregation, in our witnessing to the lost, and in our teaching and in our preaching in these churches in America. We need to tell our unsaved friends, look, Jesus can save you because he is Lord. He not only was resurrected, but he ascended. You see, loved ones, the ascension completes the message of the resurrection. The ascension helps us to understand and tune into the power of God into our daily lives. It's the ascension that reiterates what has always been an accepted fact in the Bible, namely, that miracles are a part of life itself. Take the miracle out of the Bible and you have nothing left. Take the miracles out of life and we wouldn't even be here. Therefore, the Lordship of Christ is the supernatural being made natural because God is the author of all life. The miracle of the ascension isn't only that the ascension happened, but also that the ascension was predicted long before it occurred. Let me read to you from David's pen way back a thousand years before Christ. Psalm 110, one reads, The Lord says to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. And Psalm 68, 18 reads, You ascended on high, 
leading a host of captives in your train and receiving gifts among men. And Psalm 47, 5 reads, God has gone up with a shout, the Lord with the sound of a trumpet. And even Daniel, who lived during the great captivity of Israel, predicted the ascension of Christ. Daniel 7, 13 and 14 reads, I saw in the night visions, and behold, with the clouds of heaven, there came one like a son of man. And he came to the Ancient of Days and was presented before him. And to him was given dominion and glory and a kingdom, that all peoples, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion, which shall not pass away, and his kingdom one that shall not be destroyed. And we also find these words of Jesus to Mary Magdalene immediately after the resurrection, where he himself told of the ascension in John 20, 17 reads, Jesus said to her, Do not cling to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. What a thrilling experience it is to know that the ascension is written in the ancient book of God as a prophecy that we have now seen fulfilled. How much easier now to trust God for his second coming. I hope you now realize that the ascension is a reminder. It is a reminder that Jesus Christ is going to come back the same way he left. God has a blueprint and a plan, and that plan and that blueprint involves the final consummation of all of creation. When Jesus was taken bodily out of the sight of the apostles into heaven, it was not permanent. Christ plans to come back the same way. And when he returns, he is not going to come back in a crib. He is not going to come back as some poorly, some poor lowly child or riding in on a donkey. Christ is going to return in full glory and in full deity as the King of kings and Lord of lords to judge the living and the dead. The teaching of the second coming of Christ is a core message of the Bible. And the ascension and the second coming are closely related events. Acts 1, 11 reads, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking into heaven? This Jesus who was taken up from you into heaven will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Now those were the thrilling words of the two angels who were the guardians of the great and powerful ascension. But for another thrilling moment, let's go back again into the Old Testament and listen carefully to the words of Zechariah the prophet. Zechariah 14.4 reads, On that day his feet shall stand on the Mount of Olives, that lies before Jerusalem on the east, and the Mount of Olives shall be split in two from east to west by a very wide valley, so that one half of the mount shall move northward and the other half southward. Now Zechariah tells us on that day, the Mount of Olives will be split in two. Now we've all heard of the San Andreas Fault which causes earthquakes and runs down the coast of Washington to California. But did you happen to know that a fault line has been discovered that runs right through the middle of the Mount of Olives in Jerusalem where Jesus ascended into heaven? This was the foretelling by Zechariah in the Old Testament. And he seems to be making it clear to us that there is going to be an earthquake or a split of the mountain at the Mount of Olives, and it is going to take place when Jesus comes back. Oh, my friends, God's word is true. 
Isn't that an encouragement for the Christian? Isn't it an encouragement to know that what we read in the Bible is true and correct? And the powerful teaching of God's Word that all of us should be looking for is Christ's return. Loved ones, the reason Ascension Day is so important for the Christian to remember is because the Ascension reminds us that we have something to look forward to. The Ascension is a reminder that Jesus, our God, our Lord, our Savior, is coming back. We don't want this day to be stuck only in the past as an event that's happened and that's all. We want it to be what it is. A reminder to the Christian that Jesus is coming back. My friends, we have something wonderful and glorious to look forward to. The one who brought us creation is going to bring to completion his plan. And on that magnificent day, there will be made a new heaven and a new earth. Loved ones, get into the habit of watching expectantly and readily for Christ's return. Work at your tasks. Be a good steward. But always let there be in your thinking, I am working here on earth with heaven in mind. And realize that life is a journey that will not end in death, but will give me the beautiful heaven which my Father has planned and prepared for me. The Bible tells us that the day has been fixed when Jesus will return. That means Christ will return exactly, exactly on the day God the Father has planned from the beginning. The Bible also tells us that Jesus will return when no one expects it. What does that mean? It means we must always be ready. Don't neglect this thought. Always, always live your life in the expectancy of Christ's return. Let each one of us keep our eyes fixed on Jesus and let us all be ever thankful to the Lord for his lordship. For truly he is coming back because loved ones, Jesus, the King of glory, lives. Glorious Heavenly Father, you are the King of glory. You do live. I ask that you open our hearts, our minds to your word today. Thank you, Jesus, for your glorious ascension, which completes your resurrection, and we look forward to that awesome return someday to take us home to heaven. In Jesus' name, amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen.